Diving into some comments from the Dan Quinn introductory press conference and what it means for our expectations this offseason heading into the new league year. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. And don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can continue this conversation with me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. And from there, you'll get text messages from me. Send text messages to me. We'll discuss news, inside information. You'll get live text from me during practices, games, press conferences, events, the senior bowl, the the scouting combine, wherever I am, you're going to get live text from it, plus one-on-one conversations with me. So again, join Locked On Commanders Insiders. Join subtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. Our next insider exclusive Command Huddle episode will be dropping this Saturday, so sign up before that drops. Get in on that fun. I'm David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for CommanderCountry.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, and I'm here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers and everydayers. You already know, but I'm going to tell you anyway, I appreciate your continued support for the show. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. On this episode, we are going to hear from new Washington Commanders head coach Dan Quinn about his coordinators, and we're going to hear from new general manager Adam Peters on what he says about why Coach Quinn was the perfect hire for this organization. But first, we're going to revisit my favorite quote, From the Dan Quinn introductory press conference as a full answer, this was my favorite of the day, so I want to share it with you guys. Dan Quinn on his evolution of his his defensive theology. Good afternoon, gentlemen. David Harrison, Sports Illustrated. Coach, welcome to D.C. Thanks, David. Um, I noticed over your your track record, stylistically, scheme-wise, however you want to call it, you've kind of shifted from a little bit more even front to odd front defenses. Can you just kind of talk about from a football theology standpoint that evolution of your defenses? Sure, and I think it's, uh, it's good to know that, like, I'll tell you a quick story of why, like you have to evolve and it does have to change. And um, during that time of reflection, I said in between uh, leaving Atlanta and going to Dallas, I think I referred to Josh and Adam and like, you know, did a 360 on myself. The other thing I did during that time defensively was we put the tape together from 2013 to 2020. So that included Seattle and it included Atlanta because it was really the same system in those eight years of defense. And what had once been good was no longer good enough. And so playing three deep the way that we did in Seattle and early on in Atlanta, there were some good things that went along with that. As it went further, more completions when you played this kind of vision zone, more troubled routes. And there's some excellent offensive coaches. So they knew this and this causes them problems and this and this. So coming back for that second lap, I knew I wasn't gonna rinse and repeat. What were some things around the league and in through college ball that could be different. And so coming back into Dallas, the system that we put together will be similar to the one here to say, let's collectively put together the commander's offense and defense. So that's why it evolved, where some things were good early on and they changed. Some things can stand the test of it, this front, this thing, but it did have to evolve, especially on the coverage side. The uh, the offense and the quarterbacks were moving ahead faster than that scheme would allow. And so that is why having that space for me, although it sucked and it was depressing and pissed you off, there was this silver lining in that that made me become a better coach because I had to look at myself, not just from the, the the lens of a head coach, but I also had to look at it from a lens on defense. I had to look at it. Why weren't we good enough in four minute offense? I wanted to go back and find it through those years. And so that's why I was so adamant about when you get those lessons, like you want to go and run with them to prove it. And so they've been in my pocket <laughs> on some things and others I got to the show through, you know, my time in Dallas. And that was a fun process to go through. So that's where it was, where things evolved and change. And, you know, in five or six years from now, it won't be the same exact things anymore either. So you have to constantly keep pushing. You've got to be innovative. You've got to be on the edge of things. Not all the things that you try work. 
you know, like it goes like this. So sometimes in OTAs and training camp, let's look at a coverage or look at a blitz and then take it out. It's too busy, takes too much time. If, if a player has to overthink it, it's not the right call. You know, I want them, you know, from the lens of their vision in the helmet that they can go and really attack. And if I have to make them overthink it, whether it be at the quarterback position, this check to this check to this check, or as a defensive play caller uh, to this, to this, to this, and they have to slow down where they can't play fast and aggressive and hitting, then it's not the right fit. So there's some trial and error, but um, it is part of coaching that makes this profession so much fun because it's always evolving. It's never, you don't get bored doing this. So it feeds into my good, okay, what's next personality. But I do like that there's something next and it's next and it's next and you better keep up and, or you get left behind on some things. And I learned that lesson. And so that's why evolving and having a plan of how to do that each off season, that's a really big deal. Really what was interesting to me is how much this kind of showed about who he is as a coach, who he is as a man and how that's going to be important for this team moving forward. So you hear him mention he studied film from 2013 to 2020. That's eight years of watching film of his own units, his own defenses going up against NFL offenses. And he said in that, in that quote, right, I knew I wasn't going to rinse and repeat. And to me, that right there is probably the biggest thing for an outside observer to really take home from this thing, because all during this process, this coaching search, why was Dan Quinn at the bottom of people's lead? Because he already had his opportunity. He failed. Don't bring a guy in just to fail again. And why did people have those misgivings? Quite honestly, because of Ron Rivera and a lot of the people that he brought in with him from uh, from Carolina to Washington and the fact that a lot of those people uh, once again failed. Well, this is a guy saying that when I got fired from my last head coaching job, I absolutely knew I wasn't just going to try to do the same thing again. So evolving to keep up with those offensive evolutions because that is the key to succeeding long-term in the National Football League. If you look at some of the longest tenured coaches in the NFL, your Mike Tomlins, your Jim, your John Harbaugh's, guys like that, yes, their teams might have the identity consistently year in, year out, but they win different ways. We've seen the Pittsburgh Steelers lean heavily on offense. We've seen them lean on defense. The Baltimore Ravens, we've seen them mostly lean on very strong defense, but we have seen them go from a Joe Flacco to a Lamar Jackson from mostly running to mostly passing. Like You see these teams kind of evolve to try to stay ahead of the competition. That is number one, under, not only understanding that, but having the ability to say, listen, here's where I went wrong. Here's where I'm not going to go wrong here. That's very important. Then also admitting that it sucked. Like I think that's an underrated value of true leadership is being able to accept your own shortcomings, learn from them, make them strengths, but then also share those experiences with other people. So the fact that Dan in this answer chose, right? Cause he didn't have to, it wasn't a natural part of giving the answer, but he's a part of him made a conscious decision to share with everybody that, you know, look, it was a sucky process. Like uh, again, and I mentioned this last time we talked about this quote specifically, he literally watched himself go from being part of one of the best defenses in NFL history to getting fired. That's not an easy thing for anybody to do. So the fact that he took the time to do that shows that this is not a man who is out here to protect his ego. He's out here to make sure that he's doing the right thing by his team running with the lessons, not running from them uh, is the way that I like to put that understanding that constantly innovating is incredibly important because teams, a lot of times will go into off seasons. We'll hear coaches and GMs say, we need to find out where we need to get better. Needing to get better does not always mean innovating. Innovating is changing things. Innovating is introducing new wrinkles, understanding where your opponent is getting comfortable with you, right? So you look at this last loss of the season against the Dallas for the Dallas Cowboys against the Green Bay Packers. A lot of people said, man, the Green Bay Packers had your number, dude. They were, came out there. They knew everything you need to do. I will tell you, it is hard to adjust and hard to understand those things in season. That's a whole other different conversation. But now you go through. And if Dan Quinn is truly this kind of coach now, he's going to go back and he's going to watch these games from the Dallas Cowboys defense schematically to talk about theology and all that stuff with Joe Witt Jr., his defense coordinator. But they're not going to just look at why this player was out of position, why this player was in position. No, they're going to look at what the Green Bay Packers did specifically to defeat their defense and how that's going to impact because other people are going to look at that game too. People are going to be watching the Washington Commander or getting ready for Washington Commanders week one. They're going to be watching Dallas Cowboys defensive tape to see what Joe Witt Jr. and Dan Quinn do scheme-wise. So getting ahead of that power curve, getting ahead of that understanding, having an offensive coordinator on the other side who's invaded himself to try to help you kind of understand why those things happen. And then understanding how your scheme impacts the players that gets into the service of leadership. And this is something that we've talked about a lot here on the program. Leadership is not a position. 
Leadership is not a attitude. Leadership is not a personality trait. It is a service action. And Dan Quinn understands the value of being that servant in leadership. And if he follows his own example that he's already displayed leaving Atlanta and he passes that on to his coaches and his coaches will become those kinds of leaders for their units and those players will be inspired to be the same types of leaders for their peers. And that is how trickle down leadership is really effective. And that's how it really seeps in through the rest of the locker room. That is how you build culture. Culture is not a motto. Culture is not a banner. Culture is not a logo. Culture is a living, breathing part of an organization. Now we're going to dive deeper into the relationship between Dan Quinn and general manager Adam Peters coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further than you're in for a treat? Because today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. If you've ever wondered what adventure could be right around the next corner, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. That includes the 2024 Nissan Rogue. It's perfect for city drives and great escapes alike. It's got classic, exclusive Google built in, and it's your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are all built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, which has room for up to eight people and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Continuing now with today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listener, your first view today and every day. Every day is come back tomorrow. We're going to have one last episode here talking about an interesting trade idea that's starting to float around a little bit. Not really a report, not really a firm rumor, but an interesting idea that we're going to talk about here uh, involving the Washington Commanders as this offseason gets rolling forward. We're also going to look at some players that fit the Dan Quinn, Cliff Kingsbury, Joe Witt Jr. styles as I see it today. Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. So go to Locked On Sports today to find your 24-7 coverage of the top sports stories of the day with your local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now, we are going to hear from Washington Commanders General Manager Adam Peters on Dan Quinn being the perfect hire for the Washington Commanders. Well, when we sat, set out to hire the next head coach of the Washington Commanders, we wanted to, I said earlier, we wanted to hire the best leader for our team. And we went through a, a really thorough process. As you all know, we spoke with a ton of great candidates, but our process led us to the decision that Dan Quinn was the perfect man for the job. Coach Quinn has all the qualities we're looking for. He's an unquestionably one of the best leaders in the NFL. You can ask anybody who's been around him, coaches, players. He's a top-notch communicator, an excellent teacher and developer, not only of players, but of coaches. And he's smart, he's driven, and he's really more than all, anything, a phenomenal person and just a great, great person who's going to lead this team the right way. Um, he's one of the best defensive minds in the NFL. He's proven that time and time again. He can build elite coaching staff, which which Josh alluded to. He's already started. He, he attracts talent because of the type of person and man that he is. Um, he maximizes that talent, and, and that's what we're doing. We're building a great staff, and he's, he's really kicking it off really well. He and I have a shared vision that we're going to build a team that with the play style and the identity that you guys will all love to watch. The fans of the Commanders, not only just here in the DMV, but all over the world will love watching Dan's team play. Um, Dan and I are going to be in lockstep in everything we do. We already are and we will continue to be. All right. So that was General Manager Adam Peters talking about why Dan Quinn was the perfect hire. Now, there's some things that we need to talk about here. Was he the number one option? Well, Considering that they made him fly commercial, they had no team escort to meet him at the airport or take him to the airport, and they actually physically got on a plane to go to Detroit to interview candidates there. I think it's pretty easy to say that, he, that Dan Quinn probably wasn't the number one option, but the question now really is, does it matter? Like, I know that it draws clicks or it, you know, draws attention on social media to talk about it, but does it really matter? In the, in the end of the day, what matters is how Dan Quinn does this job. Are the Washington Commanders going to sit down with Dan Quinn and say, hey, bro, you are our fifth choice? No, they're not going to say that. Why would they say anything like that? You can't control 
if that's why you got the job or not. What you can control is whether or not you feed into the whispers that you got that job for whatever reason, or put those whispers to bed by doing your job the best that anybody could do it. Do your job as well as anybody else could do it. Counter those whispers, do the job, do it well. And no one is going to answer or nobody's going to ask the question about the validity of you getting that job one year, two years, three years down the road. That applies to Dan Quinn here. Who gives a crap? Honestly, if he was the first, second or seventh candidate in Washington's internal list, it doesn't matter. If Ben Johnson was the number one list, he's still in Detroit. If Mike McDonald was number two in the list, he's still in Seattle. Dan Quinn is here. Dan Quinn is going to come into every decision saying, what is the best thing that I can do for this team? Not, well, what is the best thing for the seventh most desired candidates to do for this team? That's just the truth of the situation that we're in. Because if he does that, if he puts the, well, maybe I wasn't the favorite, maybe I wasn't the top choice, he's going to fail. He's already failed if he puts that color behind it. So he can't do that. No longer matters at the end of the day. If the minimum qualifications were met, though, we talked about this during the search all along. As long as every candidate that they're seriously considering, which obviously Dan Quinn was seriously being considered, met the same crucial criteria, whatever that was, and we're not going to know specifically what that was, that is where it matters the most. And that is where he and Peters being in lockstep comes in. That's what you hear him talking about there is that the team wants to be on the path that they're on. The person, you know, they may have had a person that they wanted to be on that path with more, but the bottom line is this guy that we're on this path with has the tools necessary to go down this path with us. Peters talks about talking to Quinn during the period or during the interview process and them speaking the same language. And that's incredibly important. Getting someone who's driven to do the, to do the job, not just because it's a natural thing to want to be a head coach in the NFL, but because he legitimately wants to do the job. And I know that might kind of come across as a little bit weird, but look, every job out there becomes a job at some point in time. Like there are days, no matter what your profession is, that you don't want to roll out of bed. You don't want to get up and go do that job. The ones even the ones that people say you're lucky to have. I have people all the time talk to me and say, man, you're so lucky to do what you do. And I agree with you. I agree with them 100,000%. But there are still days, even though I feel like I'm lucky to do what I do, that I don't necessarily want to wake up every day and just say, man, I'm so excited to do what I do every single day. Some days are harder than others. Dan Quinn genuinely wants to do this job. You can feel that energy from him during the introductory press conference. So that is incredibly important. Dan Quinn also mentioned play style versus scheme. There are only so many schemes In the NFL, there's only so many alignments that you can really use in the NFL. So really, once you have your scheme set, it goes into your style of play. And that is something that Washington has been missing here the last few years. They've basically been trying to match their opponent's intensity instead of pacing their opponent's intensity. They had no identity. That is one of the main reasons you never had the consistency year in, year out, even in the good years or even in the years that finished very well. You didn't see that consistent identity coming out of the team because they didn't have a clear, organized, unified picture. Dan Quinn also said during the press conference, his team is going to be explosive and physical. So if you're a Washington Commanders player, or if you become a Washington Commanders player, what is expected of you? Be explosive, be physical. And to a certain extent, some people say, well, no, duh, it's the NFL, it's football. You have to be both those things. But there's a difference between having a physically demanding job and being physical, a difference between having speed and being explosive. There's a lot of contact in the National Football League but not as many people who look for that contact, know how to manipulate that contact and play with bravery. That is what you're looking for in a system like that. There's a lot of speed in the NFL, but not all that speed runs routes well, come off the line well, hit the hole well, know how to change direction. Some guys don't have as much speed, but they know how to do all those things at an elite level and it makes them better. Those are the types of things you're looking for in a Dan Quinn led team. If that's the identity they want and that's the identity him and Adam Peters and Josh Harris are locked in in trying to build, then that is why he's the right hire. Whether it works out or not, that's going to justify what the outside people think. But internally, that is why they're saying that he is the right guy for the job because he matches who they want to be as an organization, what they want their football team to look like, and how they want it to play on the football field. Now you just got to go out there and get it done, and that's the hardest part of them all. It also means that his coordinators have to be on the same page. So why did Dan Quinn hire Joe Witt Jr. to run his defense and Cliff Kingsbury to run his offense? That's next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, that you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this. 
Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Wrapping up this dive into the Dan Quinn introductory press conference uh, here on Locked On Commander. You heard from Dan Quinn in the beginning of it. We heard from Adam Peters, actually, on why Dan Quinn was the perfect man for the job. And now we're going to hear again from Dan Quinn. Sam Fortier with The Washington Post. Welcome to D.C. Um, why Cliff and Joe? Well, I think um, I'll take you back a bit. And so when you're getting prepared for this, you don't you're not sure what job you're going to get. You know, you're you're thinking, OK, this, you know, opportunity, this opportunity. So it's a little different than being on their side where they were going to select where on the coaching side, you were going to see where would be a good fit. And the coaching staff would be the fit irregardless of where you went. Okay. So for me, selecting a place that I would be able to potentially coach didn't have to do with, did they have a quarterback or cap space or any of that? It was ownership and general manager and fan base and what you could create together because cap space changes. I was looking to say, how could we do something long term to kick ass for a long time and continue to play well, not just because they had won this or won that. So Cliff has always been somebody um, that I've kept up with. Um, years ago, we both coached in college and uh, we first met each other at a, an award show and just kind of hit it off on that time and then competed against each other. I certainly followed his career, you know, through his time at Tech and then into Arizona and competing. And so in the same way of why I wanted to hire Kyle years ago, like he was hard to go against. He would stretch the field horizontally and vertically and going against Cliff, those same feelings you had. This is gonna be tough. Matchups, formation, <coughs> speed, shots down the field, aggressiveness, boldness to go. And so as a coach, you were writing down some names if this is something in your future that said, if I get that shot, this is somebody I would wanna talk to. And so that's where the, the start came from him. Um, we're really pumped that he's going to be a part of it. Obviously, I know people talk about, you know, his acumen with quarterbacks and that's proven, but he's also an excellent coach. He's not just, you know, a guy that's going to be with the quarterbacks the whole time. So I want to make sure I'm clear on that. And then with Joe, um, it's a little different because I had a chance to be shoulder to shoulder with him, you know, over the last three years in Dallas. And through that time, I've just seen the detail, the connection, um, the play style, you know. And so to play good defense, you better be a good tackling team and you better know how to take the ball away. And those are two things Joe and, and the units that he was charged with have been excellent at. And uh, I think over the last three years, you know, with, with Joe there, the team had been, you know, at the top of the league in terms of takeaways and defensive touchdowns. Yeah. If you want to play good defense, you better tackle because there's so, I'm not talking about in the A gap, I'm talking about there's space plays that happen in today's NFL. And so in that space, had he had the technique to go and make tackles where uh, guys like Cliff and Kyle and everybody else want to create all this space to say, you know, make it hard. So you better be a good tackling team and you better know how to get the ball away and show good disguises, you know, to make the quarterback have to read the coverages after he has the ball in his hand. And Joe's been exceptional at that through his career. So that's why when those moments come, and you want to nail it, uh, you do it and you go for it. And so I appreciate Josh and Adam when the moment came to go be uh, aggressive, um, we were going to go do that. It's kind of one of those, if you can't beat them, join them. Or in this case, if you can't beat them or you can't beat them very easily, have him join you so that you have that firepower. And also it helps your defense get ready uh, as well. And I think it's really important though, too. It kind of gives you some insight into the life of a coach in this business, how you're kind of always like, even as a defensive coordinator in the college games, you're like, man, 
that offense was really hard to prepare for, really hard to defend. That dude's really smart. So I may not even know him on like having dinner basis. Our wives may not hang out together. Our kids may not play football together. But at the end of the day, like game recognized games, right? Professionals know who the other professionals are out there. And so that's someone uh, that's always been on Dan Quinn's radar, according to uh, what the coach says. And then also specifies this isn't an offensive coordinator who's going to come in, just work with the quarterbacks. His job is to be the coach of that entire unit and lead that entire unit. So that's what he's expecting from him. But I thought the Kyle Shanahan thing was really interesting because Kyle has also talked about Dan Quinn uh, and Adam Peters down at the the Senior Bowl. Our friends over at Bowie TV, Candy Waller specifically, Darrell, Carita, the whole crew down there. They have been at Super Bowl or at the Super Bowl in Las Vegas covering uh, Media Week and all that stuff, doing a really great job. So if you haven't seen it yet, look up their video uh, of Kyle Shanahan talking about Adam Peters and Dan Quinn. And the great thing about it is Kyle Shanahan knows both these guys very, very well. He's worked for years with both of these guys. And I'm not completely sold or, or unsold on the fact that perhaps when they were doing the interview process or perhaps Dan Quinn, if we go back to it, remember Dan Quinn's the only quote unquote retread with recent head coaching experience. Raheem Morris was a retread who got interviews, but he was, you know, a head coach much longer uh, in the past than, than Dan Quinn was. And so you almost kind of wonder like, okay, you, you look at it and say he's the only retread. So there, why, why is he the only one? And you have to wonder, did Kyle Shanahan turn Adam Peters onto Dan Quinn from his experience together? So, I mean, that's that's very interesting. And actually, that connection, which I never made during the coaching process or the, the interview process, but that connection could have actually bumped Dan Quinn up. And if, if, we, had, if we had put that connection together here on the show, might have bumped Dan Quinn up that list uh, just a little bit. Because, again, if Kyle Shanahan vouches for him to Adam Peters, Adam Peters obviously trusts him very well. Uh, certainly a guy that you could see getting the opportunity. So that is more to do with Cliff Kingsbury than anything else, but also an interesting nugget into why Dan Quinn might've been the man for the job. Turn now to Joe Witt Jr., the defensive coordinator of the Washington Commanders coming over from the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, and obviously this is someone that as Dan Quinn put it, he was able to stand shoulder to shoulder with the last three years in Dallas. And he said that coach Witt's attention to detail connection with players, his play style. And that's a, that's a theme here in this press conference is play style really stood out to him. Good tackling and taking the ball away. Those are things that Joe Wade Jr. knows how to coach up very, very well. And uh, look, we saw both those things on display when the Washington players played, played the Cowboys this year. So I think we can test uh, to that as well. Tackling, uh, you know, also Dan Quinn talks about not just tackling in the A gap. Obviously, that's incredibly important, but tackling in space because offensive coordinators like Cliff Kingsbury, like Kyle Shanahan are going to try to get guys in space and you're going to have to beat those guys in space. So being able to coach those things. And what I really, really, really liked here was Dan Quinn's emphasis of Joe Witt Jr.'s ability and willingness to disguise. I think that not enough defenses do that in today's NFL. They don't disguise what they're trying to do because here's at the end of the day, man, like the offense has an inherent advantage over the defense because we know what's coming. We know where this guy's going. We know where that guy's going. We know that the defense doesn't know that. The way that you level that that advantage or take away a little bit of that advantage is by making the quarterback have to take a beat and figure out what you're doing on defense. So if you line up, you know, four down linemen, three stand up linebackers, four stand up DBs, you know what I mean? And then that's, and you just play that way. You're the quarterback doesn't have to worry about a whole heck of a lot, but if you're rolling guys over, if you're bringing guys in, if you're stunting, if you're twisting, if you're, you know, tearing things, if you're putting safefties over the center and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and you know, playing zero tech, things like that. Those are things that make quarterbacks go, huh, what, what, what did I just see? And if that's how Joe Witt is going to approach this thing, then you're going to see a very fun defense because you're going to hopefully see defensive alignments where you see these dudes lined up everywhere. You don't know who's coming, who's not coming, and it makes it harder for the quarterback to also know who's coming, who's not coming. That is something that we saw happen successfully from NFL defenses against the Philadelphia Eagles. Come up, bring a whole bunch of guys into the line, show blitz with a whole lot of guys, don't show blitz with a whole lot of guys, make Jason Kelsey and Jalen Hurts kind of see different things. And as soon as you infiltrate that trust between quarterback and center, you really have a guy uh, who's kind of, you know, getting frustrated. So very excited to see some of those disguises, some of the games that Joe Wood Jr. brings from the defensive side of things to help balance out that advantage. Uh, and then, of course, creating a potential upper hand for the defense. So that's a little bit of what Dan Quinn had to say about his coordinators. We are expecting to talk to the coordinators after the Super Bowl. So that'll be coming up uh, next week at some point. And of course, we will do a deep dive into conversations with both of those coaches as well for tomorrow however come back we're gonna be talking a little bit more about the new developments here we're gonna be looking at the roster figuring out who fits who we don't think fits and then seeing where we are there and where we need to address in the offseason free agency via trades 
and the NFL draft. Speaking of trades, got a very interesting trade that's been uh, humming on social media a little bit. Not a real report, not, you know, solid intel, but interesting enough that we're going to talk about it uh, to wrap up the week. So that's tomorrow. In the meantime, you got questions or comments, throw them in the YouTube comment section or text me directly by becoming a locked insider by going to join subtext.com slash locked on commanders. As always, thank you so much for making locked on commanders your first listener, your first view today and every day, every day. Thanks for coming through on a regular basis like you do. Thank you so much for making me a part of your day, part of your routine. Until we speak again, please, if you're out and about, be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.